appreciate everyone's patience that's happening watching what we're doing today. Uh, uh, this is a, a, a real good example of what it means to work about. So, uh, uh, and we have full um, full appreciation of what it means at the local level too. Um, these processes are not easy. Um, towns struggle with that, communities struggle with that. Uh, takes you know sometimes some hardship between feelings between the communities. Um, so let me um, let me tell you what the, um, what we would like to propose or uh, put out in front of the committee to take up. Um, you go to page one, line thirty one, which is where the the language that we've been talking about lives in this bill. Um, and then I'll propose, um, put out for committee discussion what we just uh, talked about um, with, our, with our caucus. So <clears throat> what we'd like to offer up for discussion is if the, if the parties fail to enter into an agreement within 180 days after the withdrawal committee's form, the withdrawal committee by majority vote may petition the commissioner to order mediation. If the parties fail, to come to agreement with 90 days after mediation, the withdrawal committee by majority vote may petition the commissioner to order a binding mediation between the parties, the cost of which the mediator shall assign between the parties, and then the agreement reached through mediation must be submitted to the commissioner for approval. So what we've done is really found a way to put, put people kind of on notice. You're going to go to mediation first, and uh, you really need to work this out. If you can't, and then, um, again, both of these are May a petition of the commissioner, and then the commissioner, as we've heard earlier, has the ability to weigh in and either uh, support uh, or either to order a mediation or, or not. So um, that's um, where we kind of landed to sort of split the difference between there. Uh, and uh, and um, so I'll, I'll leave it up here for folks to comment on. President Fuller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. One of the takeaways that I'm taking away today is a tremendous credit to this group for some pretty creative resolve in solving a dilemma for which there doesn't appear to be any given winner. And it is hard, and sometimes it may make members of this committee feel like Solomon chopping the head off a child to identify its mother. At the other time, I, I will tell you that I'm torn between that creative response and Representative Head's amendment to this bill, which is, in some ways, to follow a wise sage who said, work out your own destiny. And this amendment says to the two parties, go home, figure it out. Report back to us. And if the report is not satisfactory, then we'll consider the legislation. So I'm cautious about resolving something when I, when I fear the two parties involved have not engaged in good faith negotiations. And I wonder if we're not putting the cart before the horse and taking on the roles to be the judges, to be the juries, to be the decision makers when they're when their fate should lie in their own hands. Well, I so, think... Sorry for that complexity. We're going <coughs> we're to split that, I think, a little bit. We, okay. we have, uh, we have a, a sort of a greater public policy issue that would uh, be over, that would, um, would be established for withdrawal processes wherever they might appear across the state. Then we're going to have to address the bill that the other bill that's in front of us, where Representative Head's amendment will bring up, uh, because they have a private and special law that uh, kind of slides outside of um, what we have here in front of us. So um, it's it's my intent really to try to to try to put, you know, stop this from coming to us in the future. So Senator Mullet, I'm correct. Point of clarification. Um, as I read what's been presented um, by Representative Head, it reads as an amendment to LD 1080. Correct. Yeah. Isn't that what we're talking about now? Uh, well, we've opened up 1080 and 1336. We've been working on both of those. 
they both are very similar. So um, we've been we've been working in 1336 for the last half hour. So I, 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 yeah. So what I what I thought we would do first was kind of address the larger public policy issue and then take the specific one because it might relate to what we what we vote on here. So. Um, so, um, President McCray. Thank you very much. Could you do me a favor and repeat what you first started this segment of our discussion? That, uh, so the, uh, I'll, I'll just read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, yeah, uh, we're on yeah, LD 1336, page 1, line 31. So if the, party, if the parties fail to enter into agreement within 180 days after the withdrawal committee is formed, the withdrawal committee by majority vote may petition the commissioner to order mediation between the parties. If the parties fail to enter an agreement <coughs> 90 days after the withdrawal committee is formed, I mean, uh, after uh, arbitration, um, mediation. Uh, sorry, mediation, um, I read my own handwriting, um, after an agreement within 90 days after mediation, the withdrawal committee by majority vote may petition the commissioner to order a binding mediation between the parties. The cost of the mediator shall assign between the parties. And then the agreement reached through mediation uh, must be submitted to the commissioner for approval. So what it does is it puts, starts at, you know, we go to mediation first. They get, they get um, 90 days to work it out. And then, um, and then um, if that doesn't work right there, Within 90 days after that, they go into they'll find a mediation. So that's the that's the stepping up. Thank you very much. And for me, that provides the inspiration to that's move what we off the dock. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been looking for all along. Yeah. <laughs> all right, President Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think the amendments to this are, are very fair to all parties um, concerned. But more, more importantly, as someone who has lived through three withdrawals, two when I was on the school board, uh, and one in my hometown, um, I think this moves along. I mean, the whole reason that we're getting these withdrawals all along, as the department has said, and there are many still in the queue, is because they are not moving along. And I think this language gives two bites of the apple and two chances, and I think it's very, very fair for all parties. I would be very supportive of amending that bill to that instead of just going with binding mediation right away. Thank you, Representative Farnsworth. So you're talking about um, this particular, uh, you know, being the broader coverage mm -hmm. and moving forward. Correct. Uh, it is, we may want to take and use other techniques what we're dealing with our other two bills. Mm -hmm. other two bills. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that was my goal today was to, to try to to get a better, a bigger uh, policy piece that people could mm -hmm. um, then, uh, <coughs> you know, by which to operate with, um, with the greater transparency in there and all the other pieces uh, going forward um, would certainly make a difference out there in a lot of ways. And then we've got these other bills we have to dispatch with or figure out what to do. So, um, President McCray. Without forwarding any further discussion, are we ready for a motion? I would love it. You I, would, the mic on. I would move the wording that you repeated. I don't have all of it right now. I would move that. LD uh, 1336, I'll have to pass it to the amendment is what you're trying to say. Yep. Okay, <laughs> second round. Right. Is there a discussion? You have the um, Also, would you have your amendment at the timeline that is missing from this bill? The November 30th. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so it's, we've got a motion on the floor. Second, let me recap where we are. We have a thought that pass as amended with the addition of that language in uh, that's in the section 31 through 35. Um, and then also adding uh, the language that uh, was in the testimony of Mr. Bell about the November 30 uh, deadline um, for that process. Um, Dr. McCarthy, are you clear on what's inside that motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous with all those present yes. voting. So, 36 is done. <laughs> Thank you. The, uh, 
Okay, so we've got to go back to 1080, which we kind of have open uh, yeah. at the same time, which is um, has to do. President Head, you've been watching all this all along, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we're we're getting there. This is uh, this is not easy sledding. All right, so. Um, so now we're going to we're going to go from more of the, the larger view down to the uh, more specific. So LV 1080s next prevent economic hardship in the school administrative unit number 44. Um, and there's been a this, uh, resident head. Why don't you join us because uh, you've got an amendment uh, to this, and then we'll we'll work our way through that. So, uh, why don't you uh, describe what you have here? First of all, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak. Right. Appreciate that. <coughs> what I have is I've had many conversations with my constituents and believe that the first time in two and a half years, there's finally some progress on the issue on both sides talking again. They did have the town managers get together for lunch on Monday and I won't say it was the perfect meeting. What I will say is they all showed up. And, and I think that's progress because we haven't done that. The school board has been the main focus of what's been happening. And, and we need to get more people, more official people involved with the process. Uh, in order to keep these discussions going, um, with your analogy of the draft amended, very similar to the one that was used last session. And there were a lot of good things in it. And uh, we have mediated. There has been yeah. mediation in this, in this mm -hmm. process. Um, the resolve asked the parties to negotiate in good faith to reach a settlement regarding the method of determining the proration share of local cost of education provide provisions for NERI to increase the representation on the school board, which they've been, that's been kind of a sticking point for us. I was on the school board in the 80s and 90s, and that's been a sticking point for them for some time, so I can understand why it still is. Um, and then I've crossed out number three, because NERI has already decided that they're having a vote on June 13th, on whether to uh, go ahead and vote on this to continue it or not. And the proposal seeks to expand opportunities for residents and members of town to be involved in the discussions related to the district's goal for providing quality education. That should be the number one thing that we're all concerned about. Is this good for the students? Is this good for the district? Everything else should be secondary to the quality of education. And no later than November 30th, 2017, we would submit a report, either back to this committee or the Department of Education, whatever you folks decide is the best option for us to report back to. And because of, of what um, a fine lady here said, then it may be DOT, DOE, because that, that seems to be where it's going to end up. And then you won't have to deal with it again or, or anyone else. And that would be due November of this year. And um, I'm confident that the report uh, will provide by our resolve to keep <coughs> this kind of discussion moving. And that's what we need. We, need to, we don't need to stop any longer. We need to get this settled once and for all for students, the student comfort level, and then the taxpayer. First of all, in my concern, number one is the students and student program. It just has to be. If they have to travel from Newry to another district, it's 20, over 20 miles either way. And can you see kindergarten students or third graders going that 25 mile bus ride? I don't think so. They have options, yes they do. They have options, but are they good ones for students? That's, and that's what I have to say about it. The tax is another whole issue because of people in our area being elderly 
and fixing costs, and how do we support a quality education in the buildings that we have and still allow taxpayers to stay in their homes? Many of them say, well, we can sell. No one's going to buy them if, you, if they're over taxed. They're just, they're just not going to sell. I'm a real estate agent. And I know that taxes make a difference when you write a contract. They look at how much the taxes are. Representative Pat, I've got a couple questions. All right. Um, has the town of, uh, has anybody from the OMC, uh or commented on this amendment? Yes. So, <laughs> so I'd like to, you know, uh, to hear from them because uh, a lot of what your legislation and the things I'm taking defense is, it looks like it's doing stuff to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would hope I, I would I would hope that that appearance is just something that it may have been present before, but this uh, amendment hopefully would kind of level everything off and everybody would start negotiating again in good faith on both sides and not point fingers. Let 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 it all go. Let it all anything that's been said before. Let's let that go and see if we can't come to an agreement. If we're intelligent people, we can get together and discuss things simply <coughs> without a, a predetermined we're gonna no one should do that. We should go in this with an open and, mind and, and hopefully by November thirtieth we could have something that really means that we're gonna get this done. Because uh, I learned some things in the in the previous work that we just did the last hour or two, um, that uh, from Ms. Gravel that um, withdrawing communities then have to have a 10-year agreement with another yes. community of which those tuitions uh, can be negotiated. I'm right. um, just curious in, in an upcoming um, <coughs> negotiations of this, if that's really made clear, that might shape your discussions a little differently. I, I, would, I, would, think that, I would think that they would have to know that that might build the animosity between other towns. If you're going to withdraw from our district, then why would we enter into a 10-year agreement with you to educate your students? Let's work together to make the, the whole district work without the withdrawal and the 10 years have to have uh, some kind of a contract. That, to me, defeats the purpose of the, of the district that they entered into in 1965, for one thing. And it, it doesn't prove that, I mean, they have a 10-year contract, but the animosity that's built up because of, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't sit well. The district could just say no. They could say no. And that, that to me, would be so bad for the students yep. of Newark, even though there's just a few of them. Those few matter. Those few children do matter, and the distance they have to travel to school matters. Uh, Russ, thank you. Hi, Mr. Um, you, you listened to the discussion on LB 1336. I did. Um, and, and you know what the resolution was and was passed through that. And so what about that process would not work for you and for, for Nuri and for SAD 44? Well, uh, after listening to, to it being read back, the May was wonderful because we don't have to abide by a binding mediation, which sometimes you tell me I have to, and that doesn't set well. And when you when you go ahead and say may, that's fine. That's fine. I don't know what in, in uh, 1336 wouldn't be acceptable. I thought it was a. I thought you looked very hard on it, and I thought it was a, a real. I thought it was really good for all withdrawal of people and the people that were trying to call It's fair. I, I really think you worked hard on deciding how to if the language was going to be so I think it would work. It would, it would work in your in SAC 44 as well? I would hope so. Gotcha. Um, okay folks, where do uh, President McCray? We want to move this towards uh, an outcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, do, do you think that the 1336 that we spent so much time on here might also inspire a little more? Let's get let's get moving. Let's get this done. I think that it's time. It's been two and a half years 
up and down and up and down and screaming and didn't like the, the, uh, the, what they offered. They didn't like what the school board came back at. They went back and forth and back for two and a half years. That uncertainty to the rest of the district, that's not acceptable. Thank you. President Turner. Thank you. Nice to see you, Representative Head. We've been working together quite yes, a while and having lots of conversations over this. Yes, um, we have. So I, I want to understand, uh, I want to ask the question, I think, in a little bit different way. So hearing 1336, how it's amended, and all the process that we went through, uh, would you be asking for an amendment for Newry to exempt them from 1336 with what you heard here today, if I could ask. I really don't know at this time whether I would or not. I'd really like to see this amendment put in place on 1080 and let us work it out without going to another, without going to another bill to, uh, I think 1080 with the amendment will work. If it doesn't, then when you bring it back, or when it comes back to you, if it does, then I, I would maybe think a little differently. But right now, I think that the amendment that we're presenting is the route to go for sad fun for. Of those items that uh, Resident had that are in uh, your amendment, um, and then you know, I might uh, at some point ask you uh, and if there's somebody here from Newry, uh, the method of determining the proportional is, is number one there the, the, the one that's the, the, the biggest issue from, from their side, the method of determining the proportional share of local cost. I'm not, I'm not clear as to what their, what their biggest issue is. Uh, first of all, it was, it was the student, the quality of education. Then it was the cost sharing. Then it was the number of people that represented them on the school board. And I'm, I'm not sure what their okay. priority is. Oh, yeah. We've got a lot of testimony here. All right. Um, any other folks? Is, is there somebody from Norway that's around? Oh, thank you. Just come up and join us. And... Thank you. Thank you. Let's make sure to introduce yourself and you know you're from Norway. Hi, my name is Amy Bernard, and I'm the town administrator for Norway. All right. So um, we get a chance to look at Representative Head's amendment late yesterday afternoon. So my board has not had a chance to formally make a decision on on it. Um, we've got a lot of questions about it because every bullet point in the amendment we've already done. So are we asking to go back through and do them again? And if so, how do we make sure there's some accountability to the other towns that they're actually going to support another cost sharing formula under 1301 or something that looks like that because we did that in November and it was opposed by the federal in itself. So if we're going to go back and try to redo these things, I want some accountability from those communities that they're going to support it and they're going to advocate. Okay. Um, President Chair, I have the same question of, uh, of you, Lynn, and that is, uh, you were here and you heard all of our deliberation in 1936. We finalized with a unanimous vote a process. Would that process work for you? I can't speak on behalf of the whole town, but I think the process is far clearer than it was previously and the one that we've been negotiating under for the last two and a half years. Um, we came here and we advocated for LB51. We came here and advocated for 1336. We have no, I mean, we've been doing this for two and a half years. What's next for 90 days? Um, I, I think that it, it creates accountability and to both sides that the school district is going to come to the table and negotiate the best deal that they can for, for the district and allow it really to leave. But with the caveat that they can say, um, you know, $100,000 a kid, um, they could. That may be a deterring factor to the residents of Mary. Yes, because I don't know if I 
heard you right, are you, uh, it almost sounded like you thought it was a foregone conclusion that they would vote to get out. You we were talking about a, a vote for. Right. I don't, I never thought it was a foregone conclusion okay. that we would get out. Um, I think there's, 1080 has created a lot of animosity in the town of Murray. Um, there, there are concerns about trust with our neighboring towns resulting from 1080 telling um, one community and a district that they can't leave ever um, is it's tough. It's a tough thing to swallow. It'd be one thing if the, if the bill had come to us and said, none of you can leave ever. Then we could all be like, oh, well, this is, we're making it or breaking it together. But um, leaving Erie without an option to get out, any other community got out, we're already paying the majority of the bills, we'd be paying more of the majority of the bills if another community decided to withdraw, and we didn't have that option. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and welcome. Uh, did the town of Newry vote in favor of the cost sh a share and agreement that came out? Yes. They did? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, before you do that, let me, um, I think I like what, where the amendment in Resident Head is going. Uh, this, but I wonder if we could just tighten it up just a little bit. That if, you know, what happens if it ends up, um, like the town manager just said, you know, the damage can go. Um, I would want to see this this happen, uh, you know, that would be my druthers, but then finding a way that if it doesn't work out and they don't come to agreement that the provisions that we were talking about in 1336 would then be kind of laid over the top of that. Is that <coughs> right? So what I, what I think I heard is that this has all been done. <coughs> Pretty much all of it has been done, and I think even more than once. And the problem is that they cannot come to an agreement. So if that is why we get these bills here. And we were asked as a committee to come up with something, which I think we just did in 1336. So ideally, what I would like to see is this be the, this be the first one that uses 1336. I'd like to uh, vote this ought not to pass and suggest strongly that the uh, SAD 44 and the town of Murray follow the process of 1336. Okay. Uh, Representative Stewart? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I did. I echo everything that Representative Gitzel just said. Representative McCray? Mm, thank you. Might it be that, okay, 1336. If it passes the legislature, it is going to go into effect on some day, January 1. I don't know. Doesn't matter. On that day, 90 days, whatever the date is. Between now and then, they can do that. Do everything they can to get it together. And if it's not done by then, 1336 takes over. Okay. That's exactly Thank you. Um, I'm not an attorney, but my first question to what you um, just said, it, it, 90 days after we adjourn, it becomes law. Mm -hmm. But then they're going to have to start, I believe, at day one. So it'll be 180 days before they'll trigger the commissioner portion and whatnot. So it's going to be quite a while before Newry does it. So I just want to make sure that it's just not 90 days and then they get to go to the commissioner. Right. I want to clarify that. That gives them ample time to settle it. I think that gives them a special deal. President Gensler, I had an attendant motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, vote LD1080, uh, hot number to pass. Second. Second by Representative Stewart. <coughs> so, uh, motion on the floor is out not to pass. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? And it's unanimous for all those present voting. So uh, that concludes 1080. Thank you. Um, uh, let's talk about it. All right, we've got one more.